Hello, my name is Claire and I work for Lovely Land. Uh, it's my honour to take you through how to use this nature printing kit to make some lovely bunting for your home. We really hope that you enjoy uh, this session. Um, thanks for having us along um, and we can't wait to see what you come up with. Have fun. And we're just going to take a little look at the things that you've got in your kit. So you should have your six um, canvas um, buntings, your bunting binding, the ink to print with, a glue stick, some thread, some dabbers to apply your ink, a little card with some wool to make a print with, some pins and a needle and some card. So these are the items that you're going to need to find around the house. Um, a pair of scissors, uh, a paintbrush, an old paintbrush, some scrap paper. Um, I'm using just a lid of a hummus tub to put my ink on or you can use a plate or any sort of um, thing out of your recycling that, will, that is nice and flat that you can put the ink on. And your nature treasures that you will collect from your walk. So I've got lots of different um, leaves here and um, some fennel and some herbs and some feathery. I've just tried to find things with different textures that might look good when you're putting ink on and, and making a print. So collect as many of those as you can. You can collect sticks and stones as well. So we're ready to get started with our printing. And what you should have in front of you is your, I've got a practice piece of paper. I've got another piece of paper to go over the top. We've got a little bit of ink already in our, in our tray. We've got a brush in case we need it and I'm using the dabber as well. We've got our nature treasure, which is a, a piece of lavender here. And I'm just gonna lightly dab some ink on, on my plant. So we don't want too much ink, but we do want to sort of cover the veins and the leaves and the stem, as much of that as we can. Okay, oh, it smells absolutely beautiful when I'm sort of dabbing this lavender. The smell of it is um, really, really gorgeous. So I hope you've got some nature treasures that smell nice too. Now, because this is a practice, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do it on this same piece of paper. I'm going to lay my nature print down, put a, put a scrap piece of paper over the top and very firmly, I don't want the um, lavender to move position at all, but I just want to put downward pressure on it. And you can make sure you sort of press all of the leaves, the side and the main stem push it all down you can even sort of have a sneaky peek remember this is just a practice so let's see what we've got Ta -da! okay so that is a beautiful print I'm really happy with that actually it's got some lovely veins in the leaves and you can see the stem and even the little flower bud at the top there and I think that makes a really beautiful print so I'm definitely going to use that one again for my bunting You've also got pieces of um, card in your pack, square pieces of card, which you can make into sort of printing blocks. And you can do this by um, popping some glue, just some normal glue sticks. You'll find a glue stick in your pack and using a piece of nature or a nature print to just um, pop that on the card, press it down so it sticks on. Now you might just want to leave this dry for a few minutes um, and try another nature print and come back to it. But when that is dry, what we do then is pop the ink on our nature print there and cover all those lovely feathery. This is fennel as well, so this one also smells good. There's a theme here, isn't there? I've picked the ones that uh, I like the smell of. There we go. There's the ink on that, just dab that on. And then we'll, again, I'm just practicing on scrap paper to see what I like. This has already got the card stuck onto it, so just firmly press it down. 
and make sure you sort of follow the stem and press around the side so you've got all of those different sort of thin hair like leaves pressing down as well now it might work it might not let's see let's lift it up and see what we've got underneath so this has left a beautiful let me see that really sort of quite intricate print there i think that's really pretty so another way of making a printing block is to use the card that's in your pack um, and the wool that you've got in your pack as well and give a little generous dollop of glue on there and you can make use the wool or the string or anything else that you've got and turn it into a a pattern of some sort so i like i like doing sort of um spirals you get a lot of spirals in nature and they're quite meditative to do so i'm just laying down the wool in a pattern uh, you make up your own pattern and i'm just gonna cut that off there Um, you can um, leave that wool to dry and then use the square as a pin printing block. So you would get your ink and dab it on. Try not to get it on the paper. We're just trying to douse the wool, the raised edge in the ink. That's what's going to make it a good printing block. And again, you can try it on uh, paper or you can add it um, to a print I'm going to pop it on the top of this lavender that we've just done again firmly feel all, all of the edges and some nice attention and peel it back nice and gently to reveal your shape so just to reflect there, you can use your card in your pack to make um, nature blocks, printing blocks with leaves or the wool to make a, a pattern or a shape. You can use um, the plant itself to print directly onto your bunting, which makes a beautiful print. Um, you can also use um, flower heads like this little thrift to dab in the ink very lightly though um, to make sort of textured blodges shapes and textures to print on and it's really up to you how you use all of your nature treasures but you've got six flags so well, after you've um, experimented and practiced and made your prints I'll meet you back here have fun what we're going to do is leave them to dry completely so you may want to leave them out on the table like this make sure they're not touching and they're going to take a couple of hours until they're touch dry okay so that means when you're you could leave them overnight you could do this in the morning come back to it in the afternoon just make sure you check once they're touch dry we can get started if you're back here and your pieces are touch dry we're going to need those other bits from the box we are going to need the bias binding, the pins, and the embroidery floss. So we want to take our bias binding and we're going to find our edge. Now bias binding has got these two little flaps in here and what we're going to aim to do is encase the edge, top edge of the bunting in here. About 10 centimetres between each piece. 10 centimetres is roughly four inches. Four inches from the first edge. You could mark it with a little pen or you can hold your finger there. It doesn't have to be completely accurate. You are gonna lay the top edge of your bunting on this lip here. And then we're going to fold this top lip over. Now we're going to use one of our pins to hold it in place. If you've got some more pins around the house, by all means, add more pins. And then, so then you can see our bunting 
is going to be completely encased there. If you are a seamstress or you like sewing, you've got a sewing machine at home, you could basically pin all of this in and run a zigzag stitch along the top of the bias binding. Can you see that? If you've got a sewing machine. If you haven't, don't worry, we've got a hand sew method. So this is your embroidery floss. You want to find the end. There we go. And we're going to take ourselves a piece like this. You're going to thread your needle. Pull it through like that. And you're going to wrap a double knot in the bottom. Like that. Just so it's nice and thick and it's not going to come through. Now I'm going to go through to the back and then I can tuck this in there and then come back on myself again. Keep going. Doesn't matter if it's straight, especially if this is your first time doing any kind of hand sewing, don't worry too much. Sorry if you're getting a shot of the top of my head here, but this is just the best angle to show you at, I think. And you're going to keep going until you reach the other side. Now, the reason I'm not doing it as one long piece is embroidery thread notoriously will knot up if your piece you are working with is too long. So I'm just using a little piece for each piece of bunting. Um, like we did at the start, we can hide the tail in here. Let me keep going. I really quite like this uh, pink on the green. It'll all be mixed colours in yours because um, a lot of what I do at the Wonky Pocket is I use recycled materials um, and I have boxes of embroidery thread. So I've picked some really cool colours out that are going out. So it'll be a bit of a pick mix. Um, back through. We're nearly at the end now. I'm going to come through once more. See, I just poked it in my hand then. And then, when we get to this bit, we can take this pin out, put it safely over there. What we can do, or what we're going to do, sorry, is we're going to come in, but we're not going to go through to the back. We're going to come in this middle bit, if you can see. And we're going to come through just this little layer we don't so we don't want it visible on this side it's just on the little flap on the inside so we make a little loop we're going to come through the loop and up and pull it nice and tight okay so then you can just snip this you could keep going as well until you've got a bit more not much left on the end we're going to snip it and when we pin the next one, as we stitch, we're going to sew it so that tail is going to be hidden in there.
this end bit what I'm doing is I'm just gonna push the needle down quite far and then bring it out I'm gonna pull it tight snip some of this excess off and then what it's done is it's just tucked that thread in there so it's not hanging out the end here let's move those bits out of the way and we have just over two meters of nature bunting how much fun was that i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope you've made a beautiful piece of bunting and i can't wait to see all the pieces you've made